kidneys, urine, or bladder, and that is the abdominal x-ray that includes those areas inside the body, so a KUB. Radio opaque means that you can see it on x-ray, so it usually shows up white. Contrast media can be given IV or PO, it may contain iodine, so you would want to make sure the patient is not allergic to iodine products before you give it, or shellfish. Fluoroscopy is a moving x-ray. Sometimes you'll hear them call it a C-arm, and that is a, um, an x-ray that is basically live. A barium swallow or an upper GI series, they are the same thing. It's using the live x-ray with fluoro, and you can have the patient swallow the contrast media, and as they're swallowing the chalky barium, Barium is a very white substance, and they drink it, and you can see it on the x-ray because it's radio-opaque. You can see them swallowing, and you can see it if it goes into their lungs, like an aspiration study. You can also see if there's tumors present because the, the media, the contrast barium will just kind of go around it, and it'll look brown and globular on the x-ray. If there's ulcers, it will be like little craters or strictures, it will be tightening or varices or large vessels. So you can see animal things with the barium swallow. Now with the barium, it's very important. We have to remember this part. Barium is white. It's constipating, very constipating. So we must have the patients drink a lot of fluid a lot of PO fluid after they have barium to make sure they don't get constipated so that you flush it all out? The answer is true. Okay, so pre-procedure for the barium swallow. They'll have a low residue diet. NPO for eight hours at least. They'll, they'll, um, they'll, they should not take a laxative and they should not smoke 12 to 24 hours before. Given a laxative or smoking alters the peristalsis and we don't want to alter the results of the test with external factors. So we're gonna try and prevent that. For post-procedure, remember I said they need to drink lots and lots of fluid. Prevent constipation is the nursing number one priority. We will obtain stool specimens after the barium clears. Well, how do you know the barium clears? Well, they will go from white stool to brown stool. So no more white stool and their stool becomes a normal color, then you know the barium is gone. So they will have white stools when they have the barium. We may want to give a laxative also to help clear it out. Now for the small bowel series, it's done exactly the same way. They just set, they just look at uh, more, more structures lower. An intercolysis is a small bowel enema using an NG tube. So what they do is they usually will put this down, um, an NG tube down using a, an EGD scope so they can get it down into the small bowel and they'll just give them a laxative or go lightly or something. So just a medical term, enterocolysis. The barium enema is done similar with the same substance, but they're going to put it somewhere else. Um, so a barium enema means we're going to do the barium and take pictures, the lower GI series, through the anus. Before the procedure, uh, 12 to 24 hours before, they'll have a low residue diet one to two days before. So what is a low residue diet? A low residue diet are things that don't increase parasolsis. So you wouldn't want to go have a lot of fiber or a lot of leafy vegetable, green you know, vegetables um, before this procedure. You don't want to increase parasolsis um, and alter the results of the test. So clear liquid diet the night before and a laxative. NPO after midnight, they'll get a cleansing enema the morning after, 
until clear. So we kind of want to clear out the lower bowels. Then in the procedure, most, most of the time they'll be with a radiology technician who will do this part. Nurses don't, I've never had to do this working in GI. So this is usually the rad tech's going to do this, but they're going to instill a whole liter to a liter and a half of barium. And then you're going to tell that patient, oh, honey, you must hold that for 30 minutes. That's right. You better squeeze. You got to squeeze and hold that stuff in for 30 minutes. Okay, as they are um, holding it, they may ask them to rotate around a little bit to help it coat the inside of the bowels. So after they hold it in and they get some x-rays, then they'll go expel the barium. So they'll go poop it out. And then they're going to take more x-rays. The patient may have to turn around and upside down and all over to get different kinds of x-rays. But they're looking for tumors and polyps, strictures, inflammation, um, abnormalities. So it's also used with fluoro. Um, so we need to tell the patient know they will have position changes during um, and then after they expel it. We have to um, make sure they drink lots of fluid afterwards, get some rest because by golly they're going to be exhausted after that. We'll get stool specimens after the barium clears out. Most of the time these patients who are having GI procedures, they're having a bunch of them and we have to, uh, and usually a stool sample is a part of the whole slew of tests and orders that they get. So we'll have to make sure we get our stool specimens when it's appropriate.